in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if I asked you a question in this season of your life, are you flourishing or are you floundering? Flourishing? I'm talking full and vibrant. Or floundering? Empty and stagnant. If I'm really honest with you, I've, I've had both seasons in my life. Sometimes it feels like one day, and then the next day it's a totally different thing. Come on, hello, anybody here? And as I've noticed, and I've taken inventory of my own life, I've noticed that if I'm flourishing, it's all about my flow. It's all about how I'm connected. Um, you, you, you say, what do you mean, pastor? Let me, let me give you a story to illustrate, and I just heard this recently. This might help. And it's a story of a little town in Mississippi called Rodney, Mississippi. Anybody know Rodney, Mississippi? Not one person here at church. Good, good. If you Google it, you'll hear more of the story. In the 1800s, Rodney, Mississippi, well, it began as a very small town, but because it was right on the river, it started booming. And I mean, they were building, because of all the commerce, there were hospitals and schools popping up and hotels. And, and I mean, the, this tiny little town just started thriving as a result of the river, of being connected to the river. But over a few decades, as debris and silt started mounting up in the town, the river, little by little, over days and then decades, the river moved over three miles away from the town. And so what ended up happening, you went from like this great town, thriving, to a ghost town just shriveling up. And if you go there, to, it was wild because I think it was in the late 1800s, they were voting on what the capital city would be of Mississippi. They missed out on by three votes to Jackson. That's how close when they were really thriving. But because of the disconnect and the river moving, everything started drying up and shriveling up. And I, I, was, I was like thinking to myself, Oh my goodness, that's such a perfect picture of us. And when I'm flourishing in life, it's all about my connection to the river. The river, when you see water in the Bible, the river speaks of the spirit of God flowing from heaven into my soul. When I'm connected to God, I'm in his word, I'm connected by the Holy Spirit. What happens? It's just, the, someone throw up the L real quick, right? It's, it's connected, and now his, his spirit, his grace is flowing in and through me, and I'm thriving in life, I'm flourishing. But then, because of, I don't know, you name it, distraction, I, I'll be the chief of sinners and tell you, Many times when I go from flourishing to floundering, it's a result of my distraction and the debris in my life. It's so weird. It's like everything's flowing. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what? Why is everything drying up? It's distraction. Distraction leads to the debris and now the river is somewhere else. Such a great picture, isn't it? In our text today, in Ezekiel, speaking of river, Ezekiel, the prophet, is getting a vision of this river in Jerusalem that was gonna flow. This is, he's getting a picture of the millennial kingdom where Jesus Christ will come back and reign on this planet for a thousand years and he'll be in Jerusalem. Isn't that a wild thought, by the way? Do you know that the next major thing on the prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church? If you're a Christian in here, there's gonna be like, doink, and like, and all of a sudden people are going like, Boing, there's this right up to heaven. There's gonna be clothes like flying all over the place, right? Which is gone. When, and, and the way I study the scripture is gonna be about a seven year chaotic time on this planet 
called the Great Tribulation. At the end of the seven years, Jesus, and actually in Zechariah prophesies, he'll come back on the Mount of Olives, it'll split in two, and then from that temple during this millennial reign, there'll be a river from the temple that will go, you know, start as a trickle, you'll see it, you read it, and then it starts getting deeper and deeper, it goes into the Dead Sea, and all the things in the Dead Sea that were dead will come back to life. And there will be fish and fruit. Like, you'll see it. You already read it. Just think about that. Like, at the Dead Sea, you can just get up there and just float. There's nothing in there. The Dead Sea is, the, the amount of salt in the Dead Sea is 10 times the ocean. Therefore, you can't have anything living in there. But not in this time. The river of life will flow from the very presence of God. And everything it touches, dead things come alive. I'm wondering if you got some dead things in your life right now, like I do, that just need a touch from God. And it flows, and all of a sudden, miraculously, the things that you wish could come alive, and you've been trying with a pill and with therapy, all of a sudden, the presence of God hits you, and everything comes alive. It's crazy. Oh my, I'm sorry. I went like preacher mode all of a sudden, my bad. Does anybody, see, does anybody need a touch from heaven? Anybody tired of just d dry and despondent and just depressed? I don't know about you, but I, 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 need, I need a touch from God. I need a touch from God in this season. It starts, if you're a note taker, with the flow. Someone say flow. flow. You got the flow. Let's go ahead and give me, just, come on, just give me a little. There you go, KB. All right, here we are. I got KB. Thanks, man, for being my amen corner, bro. You always, always got my back. Verse one, chapter 47, verse one. This is the vision, check this vision out. In my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing, everybody say flowing. Flowing, flowing east from beneath the door of the temple, passing to the right of the altar on the south side. By the way, the altar of Jesus Christ, that's where everything begins to flow. That's so good. Verse two, the man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway, led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out of the south side of the east gateway. Zechariah prophesied about this. Jot it down real quick. When, when Jesus comes again on the Mount of Olives, he said this in chapter 14, verse eight. He said, on that day, life-giving waters will flow out of Jerusalem half toward the Dead Sea, half towards the Mediterranean, flowing continuously in both summer and winter. That's what I need. I need a, flow. I need a continuous flow. Verse three, Ezekiel 47 and three, measuring as he went. This is so wild. Watch this. He took me along the stream for 1,750 feet, then led me across. The water at that time was up to my ankles. Then he measured another 1,750 feet, led me across again. This time the water was up to my knees. After another 1750, it was up to my, my waist. Then he measured another 1750 feet and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. Do you see the progression? When you were reading this, didn't you see that? And I feel like that's a picture of some of our walks. Like, I, okay, I'm saved. I got the spirit of God in me. Did you know that when you come to Christ, the spirit of God comes in? But it's kind of like, all right, it's up to my ankles. I know I'm going to heaven. And then all of a sudden, like, it gets to your knees. You begin to be a prayer warrior. And God just takes over, right? And then all of a sudden, in your waist. And now as you move, like, you're just growing. And there comes a point, though, where you're like, send it. And you just go all in. And now the spirit controls you. You're like swimming in this. Who just needs to be swimming in the spirit? Sometimes I was like, man, I just, I'm tired of being distracted. I'm, try, I'm tired of being dry. I just want to be swimming in the spirit. Sometimes that takes a leap of faith. Just exactly where we're at right now. The picture I got, um, I'll show it to you, is one of, one of my friends, Mallory Jackson, graduated recently. And it was funny, I showed up and it was a pool party and it was cold and everybody was kind of like hanging out, eating or whatever. And uh, I came from church, I was serving in kids that day. And I'm like, you know what, man, I might just, just go ahead and send it, right? I, I have no idea why I was thinking that. But sure enough, what did I do? I, 
That's a picture right there for someone in here right now. You're, you're, you're like, this doesn't make sense. It's cold out. I have, I have my clothes on. But sometimes you just gotta send it. And it's funny, yeah, I was giving her a big hug, got her all wet and everything. But, but sometimes that's the picture I think of what it is, like getting caught up in the current of God. You know, a river has a current. And the current will take you places. How many of us, we, that's, it's kind of like the song we sang. Just let the wind of love, spirit come in. Y'all looking at me weird like I can't sing. You're right, okay? I, I don't know about you. Sometimes, man, I'm just, I, I'm too calculated or I'm too in control and I just won't let him do what he wants to do in my life. It's about the flow. Number two, the flow is always connected to flourishing. Look at verse six, Ezekiel 47 and six. He says, have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back along the riverbank. When I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. As I was studying this, this, this phrase came to mind. If he's flowing, I'm growing. He was surprised to see all the, all the natural growth that was happening because this, this river was flowing from heaven. If he's flowing, I'm growing. I love the, the electric pink L with the arrows because that's really what this is all about. There's no striving. That I don't have to conjure anything up. All I have to do is abide in the vine of Christ. If, I'm, if he's number one and I'm connected, it flows. When he's flowing, I'm growing. When I'm disconnected, I'm dying. It's just how it works. I'm more like the Dead Sea and there's no life in me. Verse eight, then he said to me, this river flows east from the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of this stream will make the salty waters and the Dead Sea fresh and pure. Anybody just need a refreshment today? Does anybody need a little purity? Your mind has been straying and you've been, and, and for whatever reason, there's just dark thoughts coming into your mind or there's thoughts that you go, that's not me. And there's lack of purity in your life. Has anybody been in that season, right? I think the Lord says, man, I got some healing waters for you. I, I got a way to make it fresh and pure again. And I was, I was studying this in the original language, this is, I don't know if you guys caught this, for fresh and pure, that, that phrase right there, it's actually Rafa. Jehovah. Right? And I was studying this word. It, it, means, it means to heal, to cure, to repair, and then this one hit me, to restore favor. There was one time in your life that you were connected to the river, just like that little town, and, and your life spiritually just started growing, and you started feeling alive. But little by little, because of distraction and busyness, and I'm just preaching to myself real quick for a second, all of a sudden now, I am like three miles down from the river, and I'm wondering why everything's dead and dry in my life. Could it be, I just gotta get back to the source of the river? That's, that's the word Jehovah Rapha. I need a touch from God. I need to be healed. I need to be cured. I want to, I want to see favor restored back in my life. I'll never forget <laughs> my uncle. This is years ago. I would see my uncle about once a year. And for many years, tragically, my uncle was disconnected from God. Great guy. Hilarious. Loved him. But every year that I would see him, I would see in his countenance, in his body, in his eyes, in his mind, I would, you ever see that? Like just slowly decaying and dying because disconnected from God. Not a bad guy. There was no judgment, by the way. By the way, don't, don't be that judgmental Christian like pointing fingers. Be the one that recognizes that and starts praying for them. So I would pray for my uncle and I'll never forget one time I went it was one, one year at a time. One year, he came late to a family gathering and I heard the doorbell. I went open the door and I saw him and I was like, 
what happened, bro? He's like, I saw the light. <laughs> and this dude, I was like, you, you never see that? Like, you can see it in their countenance. You can see it in the eye. What is it? Jehovah Rapha touched him, and he's healed. It, it was in a moment of time. And the beauty of that, that, that growth in his life throughout the years has been so clear and confirming to my faith. Healing waters. That's what we need, healing waters. That's why I entitled this. And that's why I believe in the, in the days and weeks and months and years to come, there's gonna be a flow from heaven as long as we stay close and stay clean that he's gonna continue to do his thing. And this vision will continue to help more and more people. Why? Because they're gonna be touched from God. They're gonna be connected in his word. Become self-feeders. Verse nine, there'll be swarms of living things. That's what I, swarms. Just look around real quick. There are swarms of living things that were once dead. Wherever the water of this river flows, fish will abound. Man, I'm just, I'm proclaiming that. They will, fish will abound in the dead sea for its waters will become flesh. It's fresh, excuse me. And then, listen, this is the key. This is the whole point of the message right here. Life will what? It will flourish, flourish wherever this water flows. Now remember, this is Ezekiel prophesying. He's getting a vision of the millennial reign of Christ. Supernatural flow from Jerusalem, from the temple, from the altar, flowing from the very presence of God, and everything it touches that was once dead and dry and impossible is now springing to life. It's a very clear picture of the Spirit of God. Do you remember what Jesus said? And you can jot this down in John 7, verse 38 and 39. Listen to this. Anyone who believes in me, anybody, any believers in Jesus Christ here today, right? Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. You're, you're thirsty. Maybe, maybe you're not a believer in here and you're like, how did I get into this wild place? And maybe you're like, dude, I am the one that's dry. I need a drink, man. And it's not that kind of drink. I tried to fulfill myself with that kind of drink. The next day, all I do have is a headache and regret and I'm on to my next drink. Th this is crazy. It says, <laughs> you may, Jesus says, you may come and drink for the scriptures declare. Here it is, listen to this. Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. How about the mercy of God to give us the very presence, his very presence? Isn't that a wild thought? Like he would allow his very presence, his spirit to live in me? And now what happens? Just this, this decay and death is changed. It's, it's just like being caught up in that current. The river, you know, the spirit of God is like this river that has a current. And, and the spirit of God convicts me. The, the spirit of God like constrains me. Like when I wanna like kind of go do my own thing and I'm off a bit. I love, the, don't you love the spirit of God, the, the, the current that just kind of brings you back? I feel the spirit of God like bringing me back. I don't know about y'all, but some people in here bringing us back to the source to connect. Amen. Where else do we want to be? I've tried all the other stuff to connect with, man. Some of y'all hooked up. I, yeah, I hooked up lately. That felt good, but then what's the fruit of that in the long run? I need to be hooked up to the right source. Yeah, I need to hook up. I need to hook up to heaven to see a flow happen in my life again. Let me ask you just a very direct question. Can I, get, can I get just real up in your grill real quick? <laughs> this is what the Lord did for me. He just got up in my grill a little bit. Here, here's the question. What is dead in your life right now that needs a touch from healing waters? Let the Lord ask, let the Lord just speak to you. What's been stagnant? What's empty? There's dead relationships there's dead marriages right now. There's dead relationships with children and grandchildren that God wants to miraculously restore in the name of Jesus. He wants to bring life back into them. 
There's dead end jobs. There's dead dreams. There's dead dreams right now because you're like, I thought my life would go a different way. And right now I, I am overwhelmed because my dream is dead. Maybe he's just busting at you because he's got a better dream for you. You just never know what God wants to do. And, and these dead things are coming back to life. As I mentioned to you, for me, like Rodney, <laughs> it wasn't like this. For me, what I've noticed in my life, my debris is distraction. And one of the most convicting texts in the Bible is the parable of the sower. When, he, when Jesus sows the seed, you remember that remember the, it was on the, on the hard path, nothing happens. Then it was on the shallow, it, it, it comes up and then it's done. You know, what was the third? You guys remember the third, like, soil? You guys remember it? It was the thorny soil. And what happens? It, it, this, this fruit in your life starts growing, but the cares of this world start choking it out and it becomes unproductive. And if I'm perfectly honest with you, I find myself in that season at times. I'm like, how did I get there? And the fruit that was once flowing in my life now is taken out. John Corson says this, such a good quote. He says, it's when you say I'm tired of the death, the dryness, the impotency, the inability within me. I want more of the Lord. I need more of the Lord that the river begins to flow. From stagnant to spirit, floundering, to flourishing, the living water. And what's the whole point of it? I'm glad you asked. The last two, I'll just give you, can I just give you the last two real quick? Fish and fruit. Fish and fruit. And you're like, uh, I already know that. Yeah, but let's look at it again. Verse 10, fishermen. So remember, get, get the picture. This is radical. There's no rivers in Jerusalem. If you go to Jerusalem today, there's none of that stuff happening. This is a miraculous move of God that happens. And he's seeing this picture in the millennial kingdom, but I believe it's speaking to us right now in our day and age. And he says, fishermen will be standing on the shores of the Dead Sea. Never happens. All the way from En Gedi to En Aglaim. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fish of every kind. And I, in my notes, I put every tribe and every nation will fill the Dead Sea. Do you know right now, Love Church, that right now as we speak, we have a group of, of people in India, of course all over the world, but India specifically right now. Do you know there's revival happening in India right now? Through this screen right now, our Indian amigos are being touched and healed and the river's flowing. It so blows my mind. This Dead Sea He's walking out. He's seeing all these fishermen on the sea that there was nothing in it. All of a sudden, they're throwing their nets in. What did Jesus say? Jesus, when he called uh, Peter and James and John, what did he say? He's like, yo, follow me, because they were fishermen. You're gonna become fishers of men. And now in this river, there's all kinds of fish popping up all over the place. I heard this recently. This is, this is so good. I was having a talk with another pastor and we were talking about how us as churches, we're just so different, but that's the beauty of humanity. The beauty of humanity is the variety. There, there is a phenomenal church down the road that might be a better fit for you. There's, there's what we do, but us together, here's the picture. There are lost people going to hell and we are called to go reach them. We are fishermen and fisherwomen. And guess what? I have a different lure. You know, we're my bass fishermen, real quick. We're my bass fishermen. Four, great, okay. So you got like a plastic worm or a spinner or whatever, right? Like, it, here's the beauty. Like, we can all go into the pond and we can cast different lures and all of us can fish together. There's plenty of fish in the pond for us to be able to go fish for. And for us at Love Church, we have a very specific vision he's given us and it works for some people. Some people are like, bro, like, that's one day I... And if, I'll help you get to another place because all we want you to do is thrive. But here's, here's what we, we talked about. Here's some, some lures we're throwing out digitally through our online church. Pray.com is a strategic partnership that Mike mentioned. Over six million people are actively using that app. We got invited by that team to partner with them. 
this is crazy. This, what are we doing? We're, we're fishing. We're, we're just casting in some plastic worms, some spinner baits, and people are coming to Christ. It's crazy. What, what God's done through Pastor Cap and his, his influence and his gift in this season, it blows my mind. So we're, you know what? We're going in. Do you know that a few years ago, we, we were like, all right, let's, let's, let's put this production team together. Let's, and we, when we first went online, y'all, oh, it was tough. But you got to start somewhere. And here we are five, six, seven years later. Look at Waz. Waz all the way from Africa is like now with us. Waz was, Waz was watching online seven years ago talking about, y'all need some help. Need to throw a different lure out there. But look at, because of your generosity and your being all in, look what's happening, man. We're throwing the lure out. We're talking, we're talking about 700 souls got snagged by y'all fishermen for the great, by the grace of God and are going to heaven, man, and, and things are, are changing. We're fishing locally. And as we mentioned, North Omaha happens to be the area that God is sending us to, to cast some lures in the pond. And it's weird. And I'll, let me just, there's so much more we'll talk about this, but let me just give you this. One way God confirms stuff to me is when I'm in an area, I begin weeping. And I'll just say this, unless your heart is broken by the, by the heart of God for an area, if you're called to be a pastor or whatever church planner, don't go until he breaks your heart. And my final, my final confirmation, the last several times at the backpack, and this has been for years, the last few times, I'm driving out of the campus and I'm weeping in my convert, and I, I'm like, where are my sunglasses at? I gotta put them, I'm, I'm just driving in my little mini convertible, just weeping. What is that? That's, a, that's an indicator, baby, the river's flowing, and we need to go and cast the net and grab some fish. And finally, fruit. <laughs> and I'll land with this. Look at the text, verse 11, so good. But the marshes and the swamps will not be purified, they'll stay salty. Look at 12. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. Why? They're connected to the river, right? And there will always be fruit. Someone say fruit fruit on their branches. There'll be a new crop every month for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for what? Leaves for healing. I love that. There's a new crop every month. It's kind of like Cousin Eddie. Remember when, when uh, Christmas vacation? You know, it's, a, it's a gift that keeps on giving year round, Clark, right? Remember that? Like this is, this is a heavenly like fruit of the month, man. So much more to this, but because I serve and love kids, I know I need to land the plane. That's why I'm telling Mike and Cap, y'all need to serve and love kids because I'm in the 13, 24 month old. Y'all talking way too long sometimes. <laughs> I told you this was going to be condensed, but I just wanted to share a little bit of my heart. And I'll end with this. This isn't religiosity. This isn't churchianity to me. This is real life and real people. You talk about dead things, impossible situations. I can look across this room and that's all I see. You, you shouldn't be here right now. Either should you. Talk, you talk about impossible. You shouldn't be here. Dead, dry, impossible. We, we don't, we're not getting vision to you so you can be like, okay, it sounds, you know what? We're on a mission to reach more souls that were dead that, be, that can come alive. That's it. <laughs> It's happening. In the next few weeks, we're gonna have an end of the year giving and I'm just, I'm, I can't wait to see what God's gonna release that will combine with the practical where we can just send it. 
I believe God's gonna provide all we need in this season to reach more and more. I believe it. Do you believe it? God, thank you for this church. Thank you for this vision. Thank you for your heart, for people, your kids. And I'll be the first to admit I get off track and I need a touch from heaven. Would you bring me back to the right flow, the right connection? No more debris, no more silt, nothing that would get in the way of your flow. Do what only you can do, bring dead things back to life. For your glory in Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I want to